Let's go ahead and create a new create view for creating posts because right now we can only create posts through the admin. So this stuff in here, linking to a profile view, we'll come back to that in a little bit. That's why we have a to do written in here. So let's close up all this stuff from our last lesson. And when we're creating a new view, what we want to do is go to our URLs. And we just want to write something new in here. So let's write. Well, first of all, let's give a comma at the end there. Path new with a slash. Let's go and add views dot create new post dot as view. And the name is going to be I guess, new post. Now this doesn't exist. And Django is complaining about that. So we need to go and create a new create new post view inside of our views file. create new post, we don't know what kind of model this is going to be just yet. Um, we need to create something. We need to, it's literally right in the name there, we need to create the post. So we're going to use this thing called a create view. And where that comes in from is from Django dot views dot generic dot edit import create view and that's part of our crud operations crud operations. So now this new create, uh, create new post view needs to have a model, and it's going to create a new post, we're going to give it a template name. And this is going to be feed slash create dot HTML, which by the way, if you don't know what comes on a create view, you can always go to ccbv.co.uk. And this will show you classy class based views for Django. And that'll literally just show you anything you want to see you want to see what a create view has all the methods and properties on it, you can see all of them there. And the fields we want to add in here. Well, let's open up our post models. Nope, it goes to feed models. And the only thing we want to add is text, we want the author to be audit added automatically so that I can't create a post on behalf of you. So let's go ahead and say the only field in there is going to be text. And this is going to be a list. Now we need to create this create.html file. And so we said it's going to be in the feed fi file in our template. So new file template is going to be create.html. And let's go ahead and extend our base.html file. And let's give it a block of title. Create a new post. And let's give it a block of body. And in here we can say form dot as p. And that's going to put all of our form items in paragraph tags. Now that's nice and everything, but there's no link here to actually go create one. So let's create a new link in here. So let's open up our home page. Nope, let's open up our base.html. And it's already folded up. So let's say if the user is authenticated, they can log out, they can also create a new post. So let's copy this. And we're going to say, new post, new post. Now, where does that link come from? That link comes from feed new post. So we need to add that in there. So we type feed colon new post. And we're probably going to want to change that icon. But for now, let's just see if this works. New post goes to new, we have text in there. This is working. Now this is not actually going to create a new post at this time. So if you're going to test this out, and it doesn't work, that's normal, that's expected, we have a few more things we need to do here. Uh, that new post, though, let's go ahead and change that icon. And so where is that coming from? That's coming from box icons. So let's do this box icons. Google is our best friend. And mm, search plus maybe. Let's add layer plus. And so we click on that. And it says name is layer plus. 
uh, web component. The, oh, that's a straight HTML. That's pretty cool. I didn't know that we could do that. As a font, we want BX, BXS, layer plus. That looks a little bit different from what I have. Doesn't it? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? BX, BX log out. We want layer plus. Bam. There we go. Now we can go to our new post view. Now we have a problem with this. The problem is anybody can come here and essentially try to create a new post. Now it's not hooked up, so it's not going to work, but anybody can come in. So let's copy this and let's open up a new incognito or private browsing window. And it works for me while I am not logged in. And so we need to force the user to be logged in. We can do that quite easily. I'm going to show you how to do that next lesson. Okay, let's work with our form view a little bit here. Uh, so in our form view, uh, not our view, maybe let's work with our template first. That's going to be a little bit funner, I think. So in our template, we have this form in here. And while that's good, and it seems like it's doing what we want it to do. If I right click and inspect, you're going to see that it's just a paragraph. There's a div, a paragraph, a label, and an input. And I mean, while that is okay, we don't have a form. So how do we submit this? How do we submit this? This just doesn't work. I can hit enter as many times as I like, and this is just not going to work. So we need to wrap this in a form. So let's do exactly that. Let's do form method is equal to post action is going to be its own page. So whatever page, whatever, whatever URL this is coming from, we simply want it to post to itself. Then we need some sort of submit button. So let's go ahead and add a div in here. And so I want to add a nice button and I already have a component lined up for this. It's this nice one. I want this send button. I want that nice one in there. Let's go ahead and not copy all the code. Let's just copy the send. That's that first one there. And I just pasted that in there. And let's see what that looks like at first. Okay, send. Not bad, not bad. Uh, why is that padding off a little bit there? That button is acting weird. Oh, it's got margin all the way around it. Let's say margin X is going to be 0. Margin Y is going to be 3. And that sort of lines it up a little bit better, I guess. We can always make this look better, a lot easier. So instead of saying, so instead of saying send, let's say create post. And this button, its type is going to be submit. Now, when you submit a form in Django, you're going to see a CSRF verification failed request aborted. And so whenever you see that, what you need in here is a CSR, CSRF token, CSRF underscore token. So now when we go ahead and refresh and test this out, at least we're getting a different error at this point saying not null constraint failed post author ID needs to be filled. And that's because if we go to feed models, our author is not being set inside of our form. And so if we go back to our create view, we said the fields, it's just text, not the author. If we add author, this might look a little bit different. We can now select who the post is from, which is not what you want. When you're on Twitter, you don't want to be able to select from 340 million other users or however many users they want. It'd be a really long list. Plus, you don't want to be able to post on behalf of someone else. You want it to be a little more secure than that. So we don't put that in there. But it's complaining that it's not in there. So what we need to do here is we need to say def form valid when this form is valid. It takes self and the form itself. And at the very end, regardless of what we do, we need to return super.form valid with that form. And in here, let's go ahead and grab that form. Let's just call it object though. So form dot save and commit is going to be false, which means we're simply just not going to 
this yet. We're just going to grab the form and all the details in it, but we're not going to save it yet. Then we can do object is equal to, or object author is, e is equal to request.user. We don't have request, so we're going to need to add that in in just a second. And then we can do obj.save. Now, where does request come from? If you try this out, you're going to get an error. So we need to throw this into dispatch. So we do def dispatch self request args and quargs, args and quargs, return super dot dispatch request args and quargs. And you notice how we have request in here? Well, this is a class. So we can do self dot request is equal to the request. And down here, we can access it with self dot request. And dispatch will always be run before functions like form before functions like form valid. Uh, let's see what kind of errors we have here. Right there should not have a colon. And that seems to work. Okay, one more thing we need to do is on a create view, we need a success URL. So what happens when the form is successfully submitted. We can say the success URL is going to be just our homepage, or we could reverse it to be our homepage um, using Django, uh, reversing URLs, and basically say always go back to our index page. But our index page is always going to be hard coded to be the same. In this particular case, it's always going to be the same. Our homepage is always, always, always going to be just a slash. So let's go ahead and give this a try. Test post number one, create post. And there it is. Test post number one. And I can go in here. Test post number one. That is working for me. We are now able to create new. All right, let's add a tailwind modal so that we can start Ajaxing new posts onto the page. Now I already have one picked out and I just got it from tailwindcomponents.com. They have a lot of great components on here. And this is the modal that I want to use. And a modal is just a little dialog pop up box in front of all of your other content that says, Hey, do you agree with cookies? Or, Hey, do you want to confirm or deny doing this thing? And so I'm literally just going to copy this code and I'm going to close down these files and go to base.html. And in my base.html at the very bottom, I am just going to paste all that code in here. And I don't even know what that code looks like yet. So maybe it, ah, it's too dark. Uh, so we do actually want that background to be a little bit transparent here. And so in the realm of Tailwind, we can do that. So we've got BG gray 800. We can also do BG opacity 90. And that makes it a little more see-through. What if we wanted to do like, could we do 75? Yeah, we could do 75. Let's, let's stick with 75. This looks pretty good. Uh, we're not going to have a modal title. Are we? Uh, yeah, maybe we will. New post. No, not page, new post. And the text that's going to be in here is going to be some sort of form. So we're going to put a to do in here. To do. Add the Ajax form. And we can keep the close buttons in there. Let's refresh this new post to do is going to be in there. Uh, let's change that from agree to create post. And in fact, let's go to our, our create view and let's grab this button because I really like that button. And let's, uh, let's put it beside it. Let's see what we need to change here. So I just copied and pasted that. Cool, that actually worked out pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead, fix that indenting, delete that one, and let's delete the close one. Because we have an X up here, we don't need that close. So there we go, create post and close. Uh, let's create post. Can we do something a little bit smaller in here? Can we do text SM? Yep, that makes it a little bit smaller. Padding Y is gonna be one, padding X is gonna be three, so we're just gonna make this a smaller looking button. There we go, create post. And maybe let's add a margin to the top here. And again, this is just regular Tailwind. So if you're not sure what any of these do, A, you can just read through them, which is really nice. Tailwind is a utility first library. And 
the documentation is actually quite good. And so we can do margin top and let's do margin top of C. There we go, little margin top there. Create post. Now it's not going to do anything. And I think what I would like us to do is set this up for success in the, in the next couple of lessons. So first of all, JS modal is what I'm gonna call this. And I also want this to be hidden by default. And that button, that submit button that we want to work with here, uh, let's change that from submit to button because we're going to use JavaScript for this. This is going to be called JS submit. And nothing shows up, it's completely hidden. We have one more thing to do in here. If a user is not logged in, this component should not show up. So we can say if request.user. Is anonymous. We can grab all of this code. <laughs> Outdent. And if. And, and it still looks like nothing happened, but the idea here is that this modal should not show up. And in fact, let's do a little demonstration here. Let's. Where did I put hidden? Hidden, let's call it hidden2. That's not a class name. And that's not showing up. And this is why we test things because I said if request.user is anonymous, we could say if request.user is authenticated. What I originally was going to do is say if not anonymous, but we could do the same thing, just sort of the opposite. We could say if request.user dot is authenticated, then show it. There it is. And let's just hide it. Done. And that's all we're going to do for this lesson. We just wanted to add a nice Tailwind modal so that we could start adding stuff to it a little bit down the road. Okay, now before we continue, we need to add static files and folders to our application. So let's go ahead and close this. And we're gonna to wanna to open up our settings.py. So somewhere in here, uh, I'm just gonna throw this at the bottom. We want static files. Let's do this all uppercase static files directories is equal to a list and we're going to say os.path.join our project directory which we have set up in a much earlier lesson and we're going to call it front end then we're going to add a static root not status but a static root is equal to os.path dot join and then we want to join that base directory with static and lastly we want our we want our static url and let's put that on a new line our static url is going to be slash static which looks a lot like our media url this is just where our static assets are going to be built now a static asset is like your own js file or your own css file inside of your own application we didn't cover this in django 101 now let's go ahead and create a new file in here. And we're gonna create a bunch of folders first. So the first folder is gonna be front end and that matches what we wrote on line 156. And then a subfolder called JS and then a file called main.js. And we're simply going to say console.log hello world with a heart. And then in our base.html, what we can do is at the very top, we can say load static and at the very, very bottom, where we want to load our static JavaScript, we could simply say script src is equal to static js slash main.js. And let's make sure that that is a string. Now let's go into our page here and go into console. So I just went right click, inspect element, console, refresh. And nothing happens. So what we want to do at this point in time is we want to type Python manage.py collect static and watch what it does on the left here. It's going to create a static folder for us. There it is, our static folder. And so our static folder, whenever we run this static in here, and what we need to do is close that. Uh, whenever we run this static template tag, this function, it's going to then look for this folder, this file. And that's going to go in here, js, main.js. 
And so basically just copied over our code from our front end folder into a static folder. So let's go ahead and refresh. And it says hello world heart sign less than three. Now moving forward, can we do anything we want in the front end? Hello, this is front end. In fact, we can. And so the whole reason we collect static is because ideally we don't really want all of our front end code to be executed. We want it to run from our static folder. And so this is how we do that. And we use that collect static command to collect all of our static files so that when we're in production, Django knows where to find things. We can say, hey, engine X, instead of using Django, we can say, hey, engine X, look for all of our admin files in static slash admin or something along those lines, along those lines. So moving forward, we can put all of our code in front end slash JS slash main.js. And when you go to deploy your application at some point in the future, whenever you're ready, you just make sure you type Python manage.py collect static. Or if you don't want, watch this, it's going to ask me for input. Are you sure you want to continue? It's going to overwrite a bunch of files. I could type yes. Or I could type Python manage.py collect static dash dash no dash input. And it's not going to ask, it's just going to do it. Last but not least, we need to, if we do a get status here, we're going to see something interesting. We want to commit our front end code, but our static code has all this admin stuff in it. And it's going to have a lot of other stuff in there as well as your application grows. We do not want to commit our static folder. What we do want to do is ignore that static folder and only ever commit the stuff that we've changed in our front end folder. So let's open ignore. And at the very bottom where it says media, let's type static. Let's do a get status once more, and it doesn't show up anymore. We are good to go. We have our static files up and running. So now we can write our JS in a file in our project, and we don't have to write it all in, well, internally. What I mean by that is if you're not a JavaScript developer, is we don't have to write our JavaScript in here. We don't have to do that. We can write all of our JavaScript in a file and then we can apply caching to that so that your script either only loads or downloads once or is at least really, really fast to load for your future web. All right, let's go ahead and add jQuery. So first things first, let's just go to the jQuery.website. Is it jQuery.com? It is jQuery.com. Uh, download jQuery or instead of doing that, we could do jQuery CDN. And we're on version 351 right now. So let's go and get the most modern version. Uh, is there a CDN in here? Oh, this is the CDN. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, okay, so we want the minified version. We want full. So I'm going to do this. Uh, actually, no. Let's, let's not do it that way. Let's do CDNJS. And this is just going to let us copy the whole thing. Uh, so copy the script tag, and it's going to give us 3.5.1 jQuery.min.js. So it's been minified already, so all the spaces and stuff have been removed. And let's just throw that in front of our main.js. So our main.js can then execute any sort of jQuery. Next, for Ajax calls, we have this strange one, which I'm not going to walk through the entire thing. And so this is what it looks like. Before we do any sort of Ajax, we're going to set up our Ajax. And what this is going to do is look for where are you where are you where are you a csrf token is going to set that cookie so that we don't have to set it on every single ajax request now i would highly recommend just downloading the source code and copying and pasting this and making sure that it's before your main.js you could even throw it right inside of your main.js in fact let's go ahead and do that let's delete that delete that and let's go inside of our main.js and let's just throw that in here and the idea here, again, is that remember when we were trying to create a new post and we got that CSRF token error? Well, with Ajax, we don't know how to necessarily submit that, but CSRF tokens are cookies. And so we can set a cookie, or rather we can get the cookie, then we can set the request header to use X CS X CSRF token so that in the future, when we make an Ajax request, we don't necessarily have to apply a CSRF token to all of our Ajax requests. Now, there's a lot going on in here, and this is not a JavaScript module. Django 201 is not 
meant to cover a lot of JavaScript, just a little bit. Uh, but if you're unfamiliar with this, I would highly recommend checking out to JavaScript 101, JavaScript 201, JavaScript 301, any one of my other JavaScript courses. So let's go back here and let's just make sure that things are loading the way we expect. Cool, we don't have a favicon, so that's totally fine. We now have jQuery and install, installed. And what we can do is right click, inspect, go to console. And if we just type dollar sign, we should see something in there. We should be able to grab anything we want. So we could grab our entire body and it gives us an object. And that's how you know jQuery is installed. Alternatively, you can always just type jQuery. Well, make sure you're actually typing it. jQuery, and you get the same thing as that dollar sign. Once you have jQuery installed, let's head on over to that next lesson.